The Office of Justice Programs of the U.S. Department of Justice and the Pretrial Justice Institute convene the National Symposium on Pretrial Justice in Washington, D.C., May 31st and June 1st of 2011. The symposium marked the 50th anniversary of American bail reform and of Attorney General Robert Kennedy's National Conference on Bail and Criminal Justice. The Honorable Eric Holder, Attorney General of the United States, and Timothy Murray, Executive Director of the Pretrial Justice Institute, lay down the challenges facing pretrial justice nearly 50 years after the bail reform movement began. It is a privilege for me. It really is a privilege to join with uh, top federal officials, members of the bench and the bar, federal, state, and local law enforcement and corrections officers, jail and prison administrators, uh, victims, prosecutors, former defendants, and advocacy organizations as we examine, discuss, and ultimately work to improve the state of pretrial justice in America. Today, after decades of study, analysis, and cooperation, there's no doubt that compared to Attorney General Kennedy's time, current pretrial release and diversion programs are not only more effective, they are more just. And yet, serious problems as well as significant inefficiencies remain. Across the country, nearly two-thirds of all inmates who crowd our county jails at an annual cost of roughly nine billion taxpayer dollars are defendants awaiting trial. Two-thirds of all min inmates are, are awaiting trial. Now, many of these individuals are nonviolent, non-felony offenders charged with crimes ranging from petty theft to public drug use and a disproportionate number of them are poor. Now, the reality is, is that it doesn't have to be this way. Almost all of these individuals can be released and supervised in their communities and allowed to pursue or maintain employment and participate in educational opportunities and their normal family lives without any risk of endangering their fellow citizens or fleeing from justice. As we meet here today, to mark almost 50 years of bail reform. We have much to celebrate. Yet we also must take this opportunity to confront the challenges to safe, effective, and fair pretrial justice as we figure out collaboratively how to make those elements a reality. Across this country, there are more people in jail this afternoon awaiting court action than for any other reason. Thousands upon thousands of these individuals now detained will actually be released once they're convicted. Thousands more will ultimately have their, cha their charges dismissed when reviewed by a prosecutor. All too often, our current system permits the unfettered release of dangerous defendants, while those who pose minimal manageable risk are held in costly jail space. All too often, we see pretrial release decision making built upon a one-dimensional model which neither supports the legislative presumption in favor of release nor takes into account individual strengths and risks of each defendant. So here we are, 50 years after Bobby Kennedy convened the first national meeting on bail reform. Here we are, 50 years later, asking the same question those pioneers asked 50 years ago. Is this the best we can do? When cash-strapped local governments turn to us for guidance on how to use their expensive criminal justice assets, are we giving them the best we have? When victims simply look to us for informed, rational decisions that take into account appropriate consideration of their cares and concerns, 
Are we giving them the best we have to offer? When those arrested look at our justice systems and see, as John Goldcamp wrote many years ago, two classes of the accused, separated not by danger or risk or even the certainty of conviction, but rather separated simply by their social and economic class. Do we tell them it's the way it is? It's the best we can do. The fact that you're here supports the notion that we can, in fact, do better. With the advantage of modernized bail laws in the majority of states, with the advantage of evidence-based practice, to guide and inform our work, with the advantage of jurisdictions that have confronted these issues head on and shown that safe, effective, and fair pretrial justice can be a reality. This time more than ever, this time more than ever, is our turn to get it right. The need for individualized risks and the role played by pretrial services. Symposium speakers addressed the flaws in the pretrial release decision-making practices of many jurisdictions. In most communities, decisions regarding bail are made on the basis of the arrest charge rather than on an assessment of danger to the community or failure to appear in court posed by the individual defendant. The fact is, a sound pretrial infrastructure is not just a desirable goal. It's vital to the legitimate system of government and to safer communities. And we need to ensure that the decisions made during the pretrial stage are based not on intuition or custom or a fixed bond schedule, but on determinations of risk and safety that rely on data and individually based assessments. In other words, we need an evidence-based approach to pretrial justice that realizes the system's full potential. Attorney General Holder re-emphasized this point and highlighted the role that pretrial services programs can play in assuring an evidence-based approach to pretrial release decision-making. By competently assessing risk of release, weighing community safety alongside relevant court considerations, and engaging with pretrial service providers in private agencies, as well as in courts, probation departments, and sheriff's offices, we can design reforms to make the current system more equitable while balancing the concerns of judges, prosecutors, defendants, and advocacy organizations. We can help those serving on the bench make informed decisions that improve cost effectiveness and preserve safety needs, as well as due process. And we can spark, as Robert Kennedy did, not only a vital discussion, but unprecedented progress. Deputy Attorney General James Cole also spoke of the desire for the expansion of pretrial services programs to enhance evidence-based decision-making. Lori and her staff at OJP are providing critical support to state and local jurisdictions to bolster their pretrial systems. And I know you've heard about some of those efforts here at the symposium, and many of you, in fact, are directly involved and are on the cutting edge of innovative pretrial practices. We're seeing a growing number of these programs throughout the country, but we'd like to see more. We need to make these innovative practices the rule and no longer the exception. With federal, state, and municipal resources in high demand and in short supply, the simple truth is that government can't solve these problems alone. We need to engage key partners and innovators across the country to guide our efforts to bring an, an expanded network of stakeholders to the table and to push for responsible reform. So to be blunt, we need your expertise, we need your ideas, and we need your help. Our discussions must be grounded in rational and transparent risk assessments built on evidence-based tools and predicated on the presumption of innocence but ever mindful of the need to keep our neighborhoods safe. Now, each of you can play a key role in this effort. You can help us find ways to support the 
growth of pretrial service agencies and diversion programs in the more than 300 jurisdictions where they already exist and encourage their creation where they do not. You can fight to ensure that for every defendant who enters the system, our judges have access to the best information possible, along with a range of supervision and service options, as well as sound guidelines to inform their decisions. And you can broaden our engagement with other experts on the ground, raising the profile of this work and igniting, once again, a movement for meaningful change. We still have much more to do. This symposium marks an important step forward in what I know and what I pledge will be an ongoing conversation about how we can achieve safe and fair pretrial release and diversion practices in our communities and in so doing make our justice system both more effective and more efficient. 